Hey guys, Mike here. Thanks very much for clicking on the video. It's winter, got my camping gear, got a wood stove. It's time for some winter camping. Priorities. So for this video, I'm gonna use my small canvas tent, which is a Polish Levu, basically two ponchos, two canvas ponchos that are buttoned together to form a small tent. I like to call it a Hobbit tent. Uh, I've done this in a video recently. If you want to watch that, there's a little eye up here. You can click that eye and it will take you to a video where I've used it recently, but we've got lots to do, so let's get cracking. So I'm in a really nice coniferous forest at the moment, full of Scots pines. There's the odd silver birch tree, but obviously no leaves on the trees. There's so much deadfall around as well, so there's plenty of wood to be had. So I've scouted the area, and there's no widow makers above me. There's no, it doesn't look like there's many trees that are gonna come down. Uh, and I've also checked the forecast, and the wind's only about seven miles an hour tonight. Temperatures are due to get down to below freezing, I think minus three, which is why I've got the wood stove with me. Not really necessary for minus three, but we live in a temperate climate. The humidity levels are around about 96% at the moment, which means when it does get cold, it really, really does get cold. It feels a lot colder than it is. So, time to set the tent up. Found a nice piece of open ground over here. Should do fine. Don't lose that. For regular watchers, you'll have seen how I store the tent, how I wrap it up, basically. Uh, but I've made some additions to this tent and some little modifications just to help make life a little bit easier. The first of which is here a bit of tarp. Now the reason being is that here in the UK, especially in England, we get plenty of rain. It's what we're known for, loads of rain. It's a temperate climate. We do get a lot of rainfall. Uh, so this tent doesn't have a ground sheet. So what I've done is just basically wrapped up a small piece of tarp that covers half the tent because the stove's gonna be in the other half and I don't mind the other half being muddy. This just covers half of it. So if you remember before, uh, I had some metal poles, which was the centre pole for the tent, and then I used those metal poles as a, uh, a guide, really, to go and chop a stick that would prop up the middle of the tent. I measured up a piece of paracord and cut it the exact length of that centre pole so that I can chop some wood, uh, chop a stick, sorry, uh, to the exact length, and then prop the tent up nice and easily. One would hope. Using the, brought along with me, the Agua Canyon Boreal 21. A lot of guys have asked about this. Uh, it's awesome folding bow saw, seriously good. I mean seriously good, you guys have seen me use it loads in the videos. Snaps together, and that is, if you see that, the Sydney Rancher Blade, which I'm telling you folks, literally eats wood, especially over here in the UK anyway. The type of wood that I'm chopping is mostly pine, which is soft I know, but also birch, done a bit of oak with it. But these things are just another level. They've taken a hammering as well, but that's the Sydney Rancher Blade. And it is, I'm telling you, an awesome piece of kit. Ideally, I'm looking for something straight. Obviously, pine has generally got really straight grains, so there's plenty of that around here. Birch tree just there, but it's a bit too old. But look, there's deadfall everywhere. There's one just there that has snapped at the base. And look at the distance. Can you see there's a few biggies down here in the background there? So plenty and plenty of dead trees. I might go for this one here to be honest.
right on a right on a bit of a knot there. But should be able to if I can get that off. It's short. It's just about right. Just the right length. There you go. So before I can limb that centre pole that I've just cut, uh, the ground's so soft it's soaking wet at the moment. I'm going to need like a, a sort of chopping block almost to absorb that impact so I can get the limbs off. But also, this is a dead tree which I've sawn before. I've been in this part of the woodland before. You can see where I've sawn it. Um, but I'm going to cut off a little disc for basically like a food processing plate for later because I didn't bring any plates with me. So I'm just going to cut off a disc about an inch thick. It's a bit rotten, but that's fine. It's just the bark. Just peel that off. I'm warm. Getting warm. Oh, I've got a lot of thermal layers on because I was expecting it at this point to be really cold, but it's not until tonight that it's gonna get cold. Let's do this. Boom. I found myself a nice big chopping block that happened to be cut somewhere in this forest. So thanks to the people who cut it, I'm gonna use that as a chopping block and I've got my plate now as well. So let's get that center pole done. See, using a different knife today, boys and girls. This is one I used last year. I was using this one, I think. It is TBS Boar Turkish Walnut Scales. Haven't used it in literally about a year. This is my this was my first sort of serious bushcraft knife. I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Four inch blade. I think it's about three mil thick. Just unbelievable. Really, really likes this TBS Boar. TBS means the Bushcraft Store, they're based over in the UK. Didn't get this for free guys, paid full whack for it, but I do like their website. Love the Turkish Walnut Scales. Look at that. Look at them scales, boy. Lovely. Simple as well, just a simple design. It's got Scandi grind, which I've polished up. Obviously a drop point, typical Bushcraft knife. Really nice grip. Bit of an over, overslung sort of handle there. Lanyard hole as well, but I don't use the lanyard. So what I'm doing is I've actually not got the greatest stick for the centre pole, but I'm just going to bevel it. I just like to bevel the poles. Whoops! I'm going to hit the camera. Let's bevel it a bit. If that will focus. Uh, just so it doesn't puncture the top of the canvas, which it shouldn't do because it's fairly tough. This canvas material. It's a Polish military canvas tent, so you'd expect them being military to use pretty tough gear. But just bevel it a bit just to help. Not help it not be so sharp. There we go. What I've done as well is down here left these limbs on it so that <clears throat> I can hang things from it in the tent. I should have left these ones on actually, in hindsight, because they're higher up. These are only about a foot off the ground, but this will go into the base. And now we can prop the tent up.
Okay, so tent is set up, finally. Now this is the sort of half piece of cheapy tarp, I think it's about five quid for the three by four meters or something. You can see it's a half moon shape, which matches half the tent. And that just tucks around like so. This is the half tarp or half moon tarp, whatever you want to call it. It's just to protect me from the damp. I can lift the lip up on the side here like this, and that will protect the draft that's coming in through the gaps underneath the sides of the tent. So it just protects my body from the cold drafts as it is winter. Got my centre pole here. A couple of things that I left on here that I can hang stuff on. Now I need to get my wood stove in the corner, but also get my roll mat out as well. Let's get the roll mat first. Roll mat. Cheapy five pound roll mat. Oh yeah. That's how I roll, get it? That's how I roll, oh dear. Cool. This is a down bag, uh, rated down to a comfort of minus nine, I think it is, so it'll do. It's not amazing. Got a new one on the way. But it's duck feather, so I need to puff it out and let the air get in amongst the feathers, aerate it a bit because it's been crushed up in a stuff sack for quite a while. I just keep it in a compression sack, waterproof compression sack. I finally changed my pillow, boys and girls. Those of you that have been watching a lot of my overnighters will know that I use a, an inflatable pillow, like a blow up pillow. It's not done me well at all. To be honest, it's not done my neck well at all. So I was digging around on the internet and I've come across more of a sort of foam, just a general, general sort of pillow by Mountain Warehouse, not sponsored by them. Um, I did buy this, but it looks a bit more like a normal pillow. It's got a nice pull tab there to help get it out. That's better. Actually, it puffs up. Not too bad. Oh, that's, to me, that is so much better. Just conforms. I find air blow up pillows just go rock hard, even if you don't put much air in them. I cannot tell you how excited I am to show you this stove. Um, I carried this in here. I think it weighs about nine and nine and a half kilos, something like that. That's not a light stove. I realise that, guys. It's not titanium, but the quality of this is un <laughs> unreal. So, firstly, what it's called? It's called the G Stove Heat View. Uh, incredible. It made in Norway. It's um, honestly, I, I'm so excited to show you guys. It's just so well built. So, yeah, about nine and a half, nine point six kilo stainless steel. I'll put all the proper top specs, all the detailed specifications in the uh, video description below if you guys want to check that out. But here it is. The heat view, because it's got the glass so you can see the flame, nice and ambient. It's got these two sort of folding shelves, side shelves here. These don't get hot. I've used this stove already, I just haven't filmed it. The valve, the front, all on split rings so that you don't burn your hands. Ash scraper. I mean, they've thought of everything. Ash scraper to scrape out the ash from the inside of the stove when you're done with it. Oh, my blood. Is that blood? There you go. All the flue systems stay in it. Including one with the damper. That's the damper there. Not sure I'm going to use that one today, though, because... Oh, there's the uh, spark arrestor as well. But because it's in a canvas tent and it's only small and I don't want it to burn the tent, again, G Stove have thought of everything. I've got a tent protector. I know that seems quite heavy, 9.6 kilo. Uh, it is fairly heavy. This is not like your, I wouldn't take this back packing up a mountain. You'd probably use it with a sled or a polk or something like that. We don't get any snow here in the south of the UK. Very, very rarely. If we do, it's about that much. So I'm not going to be dragging a sled behind me with all the gear on because it just doesn't happen and I'll be just dragging it across the forest floor, just snagging on everything like that. So that's just not going to happen. So I carried it in, went home, opened up a can of man the hell up and carried it in. Yes, it was sweaty, it was hard work, but this is not survival. I brought food with me, I've got water, 
just man up guys, man up. So, as I was saying earlier, got the bit of a beast tent protector, like that, one of the flues goes in there, uh, and this just then stays cold on the outside of the canvas. These get red hot, you can see this has changed colour already, that's what it comes like. This gets absolutely rip piping hot, so this would burn the tent. So, let's do the legs first. Even the legs on this are freaking epic. Because just simple design. Let me show you guys. This is just this is just the dogs. This everyone's gonna want to get one of these stoves after this, I'm telling you. This is how easy one of the legs fall out. It's literally just these clips here, these pins. You just pull it out, that's one. Another one this side, pull it out, that's two. Fold the leg out. So voila, if that'll focus. Like that, it snaps back around on itself. Kerching. Kerching. There we go. Right, let's get this in. This is one of the arm sleeves for where of the poncho where your arm would come out if you were wearing it. Obviously it's buttoned up and sealed up at the moment to stop any rain going in. I'm just gonna unbutton it because this will allow the stove flu to come through this gap. Girls and boys, like that. Just made, it's just the stove is just made for this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna have the stove facing me, but I need to put the first flue on. They just slot into each other, nice and easy. I reckon that first flue's, yep. Now I need the temp protector. Okay, good to go. So there it is, stove pipes, spark arrester, coming out the arm of the Lavu, and then that's where the stove's going to sit, just there. And it is looking, this is the view from the bed, looking pretty dang cosy. You guys remember that big dead tree that I pulled down earlier? That's going to be enough firewood for tonight, certainly. It's starting to get dark, but you won't know that because I've got the camera light on. Got to process this down, split it, chop it up, split it, and then get some sort of fine shavings as well to get the old log burner going. It's going to take a while. Not a story. Rotten at the bottom. But about here, it stops, and it's quite resinous. Yep. As you can see, that's the rotten bit there, where the tree fell down. Dead, by the way, guys, dead. Literally two feet up, even there, to be honest, is fine. But you can see by the, the grain there, that's completely fine. Now, I know it's pine, I know it's soft wood, it's going to burn super fast. There's not much hardwood around here, guys, and I'm not going to chop down 20, 30 year old birch trees just for the sake of getting a wood burner going. There's loads of dead pine trees around Scott's Pine, so I'm happy with this. It's fine, I'll just have to manage the wood burner and keep filling it up. Okay, only another 400 to go. I use my axe or hatchet a number of ways. When it's a big sort of round piece of wood, I'll tend to use a double-handed swing, generally kneeling down so that if I miss the wood, it's gonna, the axe head's gonna go straight into the, either the chopping block or into the soil or the dirt, just a safety thing. Uh, once it gets a bit thinner, like that, then I just use a one-handed chop, but not holding it right at the end here because there's less control. Sort of up near here in the curve of the swell of the, the handle itself, 
and just it still gives you control but you can swing with less power and it still splits you know even small pieces like that you barely need to swing just use the weight of the axe head for that one like that doesn't matter if it takes a couple of times nothing macho about it and I'll just keep going with much more control I'd rather be slow and have control than a bit too fast and injure myself that's really rotten look at the pinky pit in that bad boy he's quite rotten as well actually so rotten he didn't want to be chopped that split Uh, he's pretty rotten as well. Not done too well there. That's rotten. See the difference in the rottenness. Look at the colour difference. There's the rotten part of the wood. Dry, rotten. I could chop down that line, get rid of it. Because that'll just smoke out the burner. There's a nice plane flying overhead, sorry about that. This is probably button worthy with the knife, which I will do because I haven't used my TBS bore in a while. Oh, perfect. They, they could probably make some feather sticks actually. That's what I'm trying to get to is the thickness of a feather sticks. Oh, he's a beastie, this one. I didn't bother filming all the soaring guys because it gets repetitive after a while. When it won't stand up, you just hold it on its side. That's better. That's more usable. As well as the logs, I'm just gonna get some dead standing twigs because everything is soaked at the moment, boys and girls. Everything is soaked. This is England. You rarely get dry weather. Just gonna grab a load of twigs, pencil thickness. And snap them up good. They'll all burn. Get a load of handful of twigs. Just gonna get a handful of twigs about that diameter. Even these are soaked. Right, ladies and gents, this is all like spring activated, so you push it to open nice and easy. It's got the grate here, which raises the fire off, just lets a better airflow. And there's a shelf for it to sit on there. So, what I've got is a load of twigs, which to be honest, I'm not sure we'll burn very well, but we'll get those in there anyway. Because they need to. I'll meet and burn, I'll meet and burn. I've got some birch bark as well to get it going a bit better. Down this side. A bit rotten. I like it because it's got that beefy sort of handle, the length on it, so you can really chunk her down on the grip and get some good power into the curls. works well. Okay so I've got birch bark here which I'm going to light with a lighter, not getting all bushcrafty really. Um, some feather sticks, palm tree feather sticks, whatever you want to call them. Twigs are in there, 
and some split wood down here to the right. Hopefully, fingers crossed, she burns. that open. I think we might be alright boys and girls. I'm keeping it open to allow the air to be drawn through nice and fast. Sadly that's steamed up at the moment and that way it should hopefully get to the sticks and twigs a little bit quicker. You need that draw. It's smoky alright you can see it there. You can, actually, can you see the smoke there guys? That's being drawn back up into the flue. Check it's all flowing. Yeah, we're smoking good. Smoking away. Smoking away. So far, so good. As you can see outside, dusk is upon us. That's my office view for the day. The chopping log. This is where I've decided to keep the wood, the chopped wood, away from the stove. That'll easily last me quite a while. And if I need to chop any more, I'll just go and chop some more. It's nice and compact, it's nice and small, yet it's packing out a serious punch. Uh, obviously this bit's all red hot, but these bits, these folding side trays, they're completely cold. I can touch those, which is really nice. So, you know, it's a good touch if you've got things that you need to take off the boil or off frying just rest them over here um, and it's brilliant you know the temp protector you can see it just there this is hot obviously this is I don't want to touch it, it it's hot to the touch but it's nothing like as red hot as the actual flu itself so it is helping to protect the lavu over in this corner now I'm not saying to people go and go and do this go and buy a lavu and you know go and do this but this is just me testing it out really in this po this Polish lavu this mini Hobbit 10 giving it a go anyway we'll see what happens don't try it at home, Kitty Winkles. The other thing is the legs. This part's sort of warm. I mean, I can touch it, but it is sort of warm. But the actual leg itself, where it's touching the ground, look. I can touch it with my bare hands, and it's just cold. It's just cold metal. I can feel the heat radiating off of there, but this is just cold metal. So, seriously impressed so far. Seriously impressed. I'll pop a link in the video description to this stove. And they're on Instagram as well. Nighttime in the forest. And we are looking cosy. Boys and girls, this is living. Tent life. But I'm just checking on the canvas every now and then. I might end up putting a heat resistant uh, material around here, I think. I'm not too sure about going directly on the canvas like that. I mean, the, the temp protector is there for a reason, to protect you from this red-hot flu. But at the same time, this, if this is that warm, I don't know, you let me know, guys. I use canvas tents a lot with, with um, wood stoves in them, but I have a special material that goes over the top, like flu protector, that goes on the canvas as well. So maybe you need some heat-proof heat -proof material. It's getting dark now. So... I've only got a little bit of paraffin left in the old storm lantern, which I did use in Camp Update 12, I think it was. <coughs> uh, so I might as well run it out. That's providing the wick is still there. I don't want to wind the wick down. Okay. Shut her down. Turn the thing down. Boom. We're looking good, boys and girls. I 
turn that off. How's that for ambience? Oh yeah. We're cooking well now. It's been going about an hour. It's now dark outside. Just let the storm lantern. Got the backpack in here, down here. Storm lantern over there. Some wood under the backpack. Sleeping bag. Um, got a wok because I'm about to cook. It's actually raining. I don't know if you guys can hear this. Listen to the rain on the heat of the flu. It's crackling. Can you hear that? It's starting to rain. Shows how hot it is. Can you see the rain on the outside of the tent? It's freezing up. Okay, we're good. Whew. Oh, it's warm in here. The fire's going well. It's still a little bit too early to eat. Uh, we're at 5.30? 5? 5? 5 o'clock. Too early to eat. What is going on there, man? What is that? What even is that? It's a couple days till Christmas. It's about three, de four days till Christmas at the time of filming this. And... It's time for a beer. It's that time of night. Five o'clock on a weeknight, on a school night. Uh, Stone IPA, Stone IPA. Those long-term subscribers will remember I had a Stone IPA uh, a few last year, about last February. Well, look, I have them regularly, but the last one I put on camera was last February, last February on an overnighter, nice cold one. Uh, big fan of Stone IPA, probably up there with the best. Up there with the best. That is bold, I know, that is a bold claim. Hazy from Haze Outdoors will be, will, won't be happy with that. He won't be happy with that because he's a Northern Monk fanboy, so I'm yet to be Swain. Swain? Swerved? Sw Who knows? Cheers. Thanks to everyone who watches this channel. Thanks to the whatever. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Really appreciate all your views, all your comments especially, and the likes if you give them, and obviously if you're subscribed. Massive, massive thank you. The channel has grown so much in not just this year, but especially the last sort of four or five months, it's really grown fast. So I'm, I'm really grateful, to be honest, to you guys, because uh, obviously wouldn't be here without you. Um, that sounds very cliche, I know, but this is my full-time job. I, I was a teacher, I quit teaching just over a year ago now so I've been full-time YouTube for just over a year and the channel has blown up really it's been you've been a massive help so thanks to everyone who subscribed hugely hugely grateful uh, and also to dad as well I know you're watching this dad at some point but really appreciate your help uh, especially with the pallet with cabin series that's been really good fun I'm really enjoying doing that with you so thanks dad uh, hopefully we can build some more stuff again in the future um, and I know to the YouTube guys, to you viewers, uh, you've really enjoyed the, the Pallet with Cabin series, so I'm just grateful, you know. I'm really grateful, guys. I am. I'm really grateful. Um, it's just, full-time YouTube is not easy. People think it's easy. It's really not. It's really not easy because you have to be on your game all the time. And if you don't upload, you don't, you don't earn revenue, really. You don't earn revenue, but so it's not just the passion. It's the passion of making films. It's the time that goes into it and, and the social media and everything like that. It just consumes you. And there's all studies coming out now about social media and how people are getting anxiety due to being on social media so much. And, you know, people are always comparing themselves to someone else. And if I'm gonna, if I could give any advice, I know I'm only young, but if I could give any advice to people my age is, is put your phones down sometimes. And I'm a hypocrite. I'm on my phone a lot, but that's because it's my job, you know, social media and things like that. But... If you can put your phone down, put the technology down and get outside and do something with family, with friends, I seriously urge you to do it. You will feel so much better. And just switch off, literally switch off from technology. Because I've struggled for the last year or so, you know, with getting sucked into it and drawn into it all the time. Obviously with it being a lifestyle, it's, it's hard when it's your job because you can't get away from it. But things like on weekends now I don't I don't tend to touch it I don't t I try not to touch it at all my phone and um, yeah I urge you guys if you're out there and you're on social media a lot you younger guys and girls get off your phones 
get off it and, and get outside. Learn something new. Do something new. But m- most importantly, just get outside into nature, into the outdoors, into the woods, into the, to the mountains, the hills, get on the lakes, whatever. Just go, go somewhere and take a friend and have a good time and just create memories. You're not going to remember that time that you were on your phone on Facebook at 4 o'clock on uh, February the 5th in 2016. Are you going to remember that? Or are you going to remember that time you went with your buddy and you climbed a mountain and you were worried about coming back or, and whether you should make it to the summit or not or turn around and come back or you went with your buddy out in the woods that time and you made this shelter you know, and, and you, had, you made a massive fire and you really enjoyed it and you cooked up some food. Those are the things that you're going to remember. You're not going to remember when you're glued on your phone uh, uh, you know, on Facebook and things like that and social media. You're not going to remember those times. You're going to remember the times that are memories in the outdoors. Do your ancestors proud. Don't shame your ancestors, your primitive ancestors, by, by watching your life fade away on social media. Don't do it. Get out there. That was, that was deep. That was very deep. was deep sorry guys got a bit got a bit deep on you there got a bit emotional on you philosophical this is going down a tree Mm. anyway what a year it's been unbelievable and I'm grateful it's been an epic year it's been an epic year. I've had not only did I have my first video go over a million views, I had like a couple of videos go over a million views. One go over two million views in in three months, four months. Mad, four months, two million views. That bushcraft camp up at eleven. That was just didn't expect that. <laughs> crazy. It is crazy. So there's the little disc I cut up earlier. I bought this this mini wok. I didn't buy it actually, mum gave it to me. Mum, if you're watching, big thank you for the little mini wok. I'm gonna do a stir fry, boys and girls, on the wood stove. Never done it on a wood stove before, done it plenty of times at home, but not on the wood stove. And mum found this little wok, which is really awesome. So cheers, mum. You rock. So I've got the wok, which I'll put oil in. Then I have red pepper, a couple of mushrooms. I should have cut a bigger plate. <laughs> An onion. Oh, he's gonna. Oh no! Come on! This is what these chefy people do. They make everything look neat. There we go. Uh, and then some leftover. I don't know if you guys can see that. Roast beef. It's gonna be a beef stir. Uh, beef. Did I say stir fry earlier? Fajitas, girls and boys. Fajitas. That's what I'm making. Not a stir fry. Anyway, roast beef. Cooked it on the weekend for me and Emmy, my wife. Obviously, Jack's my dog got a bit because he's a lucky boy and he's got pretty eyes. Uh, so, yeah, roast beef. And then in here, I've had to wrap these in tin foil because I'm going to cook them in the tin foil or bako foil, I think you guys in America call it. I'm not sure. And this is the. Ah, oh, I ripped it. Come on. Every time. Look. Um, yeah, the actual pita bread or whatever it's called for heater itself. So that's just going to... Oh, man, everything's gone everywhere. I've shut down the valve a little bit because when I open it... Like, listen to the difference in this, by the way. Listen. You can actually see the flames change. It's roars. Anyway, I've turned it onto sort of cooking flame now. So there's a small... Ow! There's a small gap to allow a little bit of airflow so that it draws up through the flue uh, that's necessary if I shut that right off it will just end up possibly going out and burning too low to cook on I need heat I need flame to do that it's going to be too hot so right about there probably going to heat the pan up first and the pan this is the baby wok mum gave me fits look at that Plum. Remember, these are cold. I can touch these and hold them. So when that gets too hot, I can just put it over there. So, uh, those that watch the channel regularly know that I use an Openel number eight to process my food. Don't know why, it's just a really nice small scale folder that just is pin- is really sharp, but just does the job. So that's the number eight. There's loads of different Openels out there. I just like this one. So, 
Now that wood I chopped earlier, that's the sort of rotten side that was facing out to the uh, to the elements. That's the good side. I'm going to call that the good side anyway. So we don't want to lose much of this. As Dad would say, nothing wrong with a bit of bacteria. Nothing wrong with a bit of bacteria, boys and girls. Well, okay. Let's get organised here, let's get organised. So, I'm not a chef by any means. <laughs> In fact, that's something I really need to improve on next year is my cooking. This is one of the most blimmin' luxurious meals I've cooked, but this is a winter camp in the Hobbit tent and we're going to enjoy it. Uh, for those wondering about bears and cougars, etc. coming after this food, we don't have them in the UK. The only thing that will probably pester me is a fox or maybe a badger, if I'm lucky, because they're rare to see. So that's the peppers, as I like to say, peppers. Mushroom, everyone's got their own way of cutting things. This is just what I do with mushroom. Another mushroom, straight down the middle, son. That's the mushrooms. Oh, bit of dirt, doesn't hurt. We I like to get the oil all around the edge of the pan when sort of stir frying and doing for heaters because the stuff can the uh, food the veg can stick on the edge a lot of the time so get her nicely oiled up sounds a bit dodgy we're cooking boys Remember, the beef's already cooked, so... That's the sound everyone wants to hear. Bit of oil on top. Beef in there. It's a heat of spice. Ooh, yeah. I'm just going to use that plate. These are now pretty much warm already. I don't want to put them straight on there because they'll just burn. That's the great thing is this can just sit on the sides like that and just chill out. Oh, she's looking good. Try to do it with one hand. Oh, yes, please. It's so good, look at that. Is that a uh, wok is now just keeping the contents of the fajita warm just by sitting on the edge of the log burner mm. that's so good look at that that is so good all right i think i've got about enough for four fajitas here maybe even five I always carry a little rag with me. It's so handy. It's one of the most underestimated camping items I have, is a rag, little mini towel. Be so grateful for that towel when you get fajita juice all over your hands. Oh, round three. A couple of things I wanted to just mention. Uh, with it being a wood stove, some of you might be asking, got a wood stove in the tent, what about poisonous gases like God, that's bright. Carbon monoxide. Um, I do take that into consideration. Uh, I've been using wood stoves in, the t in a canvas tent, in a three meter bell tent for a while now. Uh, those of you really long term subscribers will see, will, will have seen the videos with me and Emmy, my wife and Jax, uh, and the frontier stove that we had in uh, that tent. Uh, and we, we carry these, um, I had these near our heads, which are carbon monoxide alarms. I know it's not exactly cool to go camping and take a carbon monoxide alarm. I'm fully aware that it's, you know, you don't look cool with it. 
but frankly it's not about looks for me couldn't care what it looks like this thing could save your life it's just it's only small what's that four inches by probably two inches weighs nothing this picks up carbon monoxide fumes it alerts you here's a test so you can hear it's really really loud now that will keep beeping if it detects carbon monoxide now humans for those that don't know we can't smell it's odorless carbon monoxide you can't see it you can't smell it generally it comes with smoke uh, but you will not be able to smell it uh, and it can kill you in your sleep it can kill you tents are one of the worst things for it uh, but generally from even gas stoves even your little gas stove that gives off carbon monoxide so stoves and tents is, is, a, is, a, is a touchy topic with people uh, it is for me it's okay because I know what I'm doing I'm used to it but I would recommend getting one of these guys it's it, for the sake of a couple of quid it's really a light it is a lifesaver I bought <laughs> this is a bit of an overkill thermometer I've got it off my shed at home but I thought I'd bring it I've only just got it out of the bag so it's reading 10 degrees at the moment uh, trust me it's warmer than that in here but I'm gonna I'm gonna ah. <laughs> That's going to fall down, but I'll put it there just so we can see, so you guys can see how warm it really does get in here. Because I've got the tent doors open; they're completely they're completely open, so there's cold air coming in anyway. It would be too hot with them shut. So, <laughs> so we'll see. Crystal Rye IPA, Adnam Southwold. Adnam Southwold. I've never had an Adnam Southwold. <sighs> Nope, drink responsibly, people. A fine ale with big, bold citrus, pine, and subtle toffee flavours. Robust, smooth, and full bodied. Oh, wait for this. Great with fajitas. Great with fajitas, fully loaded burgers, and chicken madras curries. I've just had a fajita. It was, fu it was fate. It was meant to be. This beer was just meant to be. I didn't buy this consciously for eating fajitas, but that is. That is something else. Mm. That is that's very similar to Stone IPA for those wondering. That is citrusy. We're getting onto bigger sized wood now. So I'm gonna give this a go. Partially rotten. Doesn't really matter too much. There's a big big bugger in there at the moment. It needs another one. And that will last a long time. Open her up a bit. She's blacked up, but it doesn't matter. I'll clean that up in a minute. Absolutely loving it. And the temperature is, that's been on the floor, nearly 20 degrees. About 18 degrees. It's been on the floor low down there. It fell off from up here. So, gonna tie my thermometer up as it keeps falling down. Tie this without snapping it. Tie it on the top. And then I will tie it on the bottom as well, just to be sure. And that way, I don't have to balance it precariously. Very posh word, precariously. Ladies and gents, before we go to bed, temperature check. And I think that says about 26, 27 degrees maybe. It's certainly warm in here. I'll put some bigger logs on now. And she's cooking good. Big time, good. Ow. Yeah, big ones. Gonna let that burn down slowly, really. That'll last most of the next two hours, I'd say. I'm gonna hit the sheets, I'm really tired. It's so warm in here. I've, I've closed the door, but I might just leave it open, to be honest, because it's so warm. I know it's gonna get cold in the in the night, but hopefully the tart will keep that draft out. But I'll say goodnight, and I'll see you guys, hopefully, in the morning.